On today's Locked On Bulls, me and Pat will be breaking down the Bulls interviewing yet another guard. Should we be concerned? We'll also be doing our player profiles on EJ Liddell and talking about the Eastern Conference Finals. All that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. <laughs> you are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze in the building. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central. And Pat, we got to get into it. The Bulls have interviewed yet another guard, and that's Kendall Brown. Now, we could we we could take this to a lot of different. I'm a conspiracy theorist, so there's a lot of different places <laughs> my mind can take this. Um, it could mean something for Kobe White. It could mean something for another starting shooting guard. Um, who knows what that means? Now, Pat, we talked about it a little bit yesterday when it was reported that they interviewed Marjan. So now, where do you sit at with hearing them interview yet another guard? At least this guard fits a little bit more, right? Like Kendall Brown comes in, 34% three-point shooter in college, uh, 58% from the field. At least he fits kind of the mold of the kind of player we would want a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know, dog. I, I mean, again, I, I kind of feel <clears throat> like it's, hey, do you do diligence? Um, I look at it more as a... I'm glad to see the Bulls going out there. And, and because, listen, right, like... You you do think about it at a minimum. You have to think about it like this, right? If they're going to use this pick on a guard, if they're going to use one of their picks on a guard, it would make sense because we went through a season where we got to the point where our backup guard was our starting guard, and then the backup to the backup guard was injured. And so you got to a point where you were playing Troy Brown and the rest of them guys. Like, I guess I could see why they would be looking guard. Again, I, I'm, I still don't have this major concern that they're going to go outside of the box uh, on what we think that they should do. I mean, the, the difference with him is, right, like you might bring in a Kendall Brown and say, hey, this is our Alonzo Ball prototype in the making, although he doesn't pass well, anything like Alonzo. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, and I guess, too, like he, can, he could possibly play the shooting guard, but I guess he's more of a small forward, so – you do, and we do need. I, yeah, that guy is weird at this point. Like, they, he's a guard, he's a small forward. Who knows what he is? He's like, he could be 6'11 and he's a point guard at this point. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's to me, I'm glad that we're going through all the names, right? I feel the same way about it, like I did when they, I, I heard this season that the Bears were talking to potential quarterback candidates. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, they're doing their job. Somebody might be on the draft board and you might want to go get them just in case Justin goes down or gets hurt. Like, that's kind of how I feel about this, right? Like, if you go out and get them, maybe you bring them in as a backup to P. Will. But, I mean, he's 6'8", 205. He's, he's, he's not a big guy. Like, I, I don't know. But I'm he not does have overly... a 6'11 wingspan, right? So, like, you can – what <clears throat> while you can see him maybe playing guard when he initially comes in just because of the, the size, that gives him an actual mismatch, he's probably going to project to be more of a small forward, power, maybe even powerful depending on how much weight he can put on. But as you at 205, I'll tell you what, at 205, weight, at 205, you're not playing power forward very much in this league, not nowadays. Like, no. there may be some 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, power forwards, but they about 220, 235, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> he, he'd have to put on a lot of weight. I don't think there's I, – I, I think we're going to hear about the Bulls being in on a lot of different prospects the mm. same way that we did when AK – first got here right like remember we were we were bringing up all of these other names that the bulls could have gone after are they going to go after uh, uh um now nah, i can't think of buddy name from new york now that i'm actually you know sitting there talking about it. you know but, but the year that we drafted p will there was a lot of other names that came up mm -hmm. that the bulls uh uh could have gone after and we ended up getting p will so maybe they will do the old switcheroo right like maybe maybe they will go a different direction and try to find somebody with with some dual versatility like you said he's got a 611 wingspan but i i feel like this is the bulls right like hey let's meet with him let's see what's going on <clears throat> maybe we'll find a diamond in the rough like where you you've got kind of the uh 
the draft board breakdown on all the mock drafts across the nation. Where do you got him slated going right now? Is he is he going to be <clears throat> would that be a reach for us at this point? No, honestly. So some mock drafts have him, us go, him going to us at 18. Mm. So he hovers his round. At least what I'm looking at, the highest that I've seen him go is 15 to Charlotte. They can use some possible scoring off the bench. Um, and then the lowest that I see him, at least at what I'm looking at right now, is about 26. So that's right within our range. I think the weight is the interesting part. Like, that's almost the part that throws you off, right? Like, even if a Patrick Baldwin came to us, what's he, like, 225, 230 almost? Like, same size, same kind of wingspan, but yeah. I don't know, a 205 guy? Like, he he almost is a guard at the NBA level, even though he's 6'8". Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it'll be interesting to see how they, how, they, how they play him out. I can't think of a, of a big-name forward right now that's that slight. Like, that is... That and even the two hundred five is him putting on weight. He started off the season at two hundred. Yeah, I, I I can think of a big name forward that's that slight, but I'm not giving him that with nine points per game. What's that? <laughs> Kevin Durant. <laughs> How much does KD? Well, uh, but then again, KD's freaking six eleven. So yeah. So I mean, but yeah, KD's slightness is a little bit different. Huh? Brandon Ingram, how tall is Brandon Ingram? He's about six, six, eight, six, nine. No, Brandon, Brandon Ingram is six ten too, brother. Is he? Well, yeah. dang, he's got nothing. <laughs> 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 I don't know, bro. Like honestly, like I don't. He, that dog, Kevin Durant was still two hundred fifteen pounds coming out. Of, like two hundred five is really light. <clears throat> That's yeah. a really small guy. I don't. I don't see. I, I'd be surprised if the Bulls went and got him. I'm not gonna lie to you because I feel like it, it, does he fix a problem that the Bulls need? Like you. I do think he's a good shooter, and you hope that he could continue to do that. And a six eight, a good shooter off of the bench would help you a mm -hmm. little bit. But like, does he come in and, and become that Derek Jones kind of player with maybe a little better jump shot? That's a slight frame. Small That's a slight. Forward. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I just looked it up, so I stand corrected. Brandon Ingram is actually six eight, 190 pounds. So you got to be a heck of a player. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I wonder if that's updated weight, though. I wonder if that's, like, weight when he came into the league. Like, he's 190 pounds? Wow, that's crazy. And, but but even with that, right, like, Brandon Ingram was a killer in college. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, that's a long way to go to get to that. Not to say he can't do that. Not to say he won't be a name that we won't be talking about for years to come. But here's the thing, right? That's why I'm excited that AK is doing what they're doing because – there's names like a Kendall Brown that the Bulls could be meeting with and or well, that the Bulls are meeting with that maybe we would look at and say, I don't know. Like I, like I said yesterday, and I think my Patrick Williams highlight reaction is one of my higher viewed videos. Um, I looked at P. Will and I was like, I can absolutely see why people would want him. I don't think he's the fourth pick in the draft. Guess what? <coughs> AK did. And now yeah. I look at Patrick Williams and I'm like, I can see it work. So I like that they're doing their due diligence on it, right? I'd rather have us talking about 17, 18 players that we're looking at, scratching our heads like, why the heck would we be talking to this guy? How does he fit with the team? Than us sitting here like, hey, we ain't talked to nobody yet. <laughs> the you guard packs. I mean? uh, but yeah, and, and yeah. you know, it's yeah. and especially especially in a draft where there's not a lot of star potential in this draft, right? There's some. So you there's dig. not a lot. But it's a deep draft in the sense that you can get a, a very solid role player yeah. in this draft. So, like, the teams that are looking to compete, especially because there's a lot of, of you know, higher classmen in this draft, too, that stayed in, in college for a while, you can do some damage. And that's kind of the, the person that we're going to be reviewing today. EJ Liddell fits that. But as far as, like, what AK and Eversley are doing, cast that wide net because, hey, as we know and we trust, look at Io DeSumo, that they evaluate talent very well. And yeah. so, hey, if you got to look at and interview everyone, if you got to interview twenty people to find your diamond in the rough, and you're gonna and you find that diamond, which we can trust that they're going to do, you you, you got to go through everything. Got to go through all the options. So you do, you definitely do. I I don't know, man. I he don't make sense to me. But again, I haven't specifically sat down and looked at his tape yet. That's probably a video for tomorrow as well. So. There you go. There you go. All right. So next up, we will be talking about EJ Liddell and, and the Bulls potentially drafting him, how he could fit on the team. But first, I got to talk to you guys about prize picks. Are you looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA? Then you need to try the award winning app. 
Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy, and we know you're going to love it. It's easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any ent- entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Prize Picks offers any prop you can think of, from points scored to rebounds and even steals. Pro- uh, Prize Picks also allows you to do mixed sports entries, which is a lot of fun. If you want to do kind college basketball, NBA, college football, NFL, MLB, soccer, MMA, and much more. And for a limited time, PrizePix has an exclusive no-burner offer for all of our users. Our users get $50 free if any player in your first PrizePix entry scores a single point, but you must use code NBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available to Locked On fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA for $50 free if any player in your first PrizePix entry scores a single point. All right. Back to the business at hand, Pat. EJ Liddell. Now, this is a name that it's been talked about a lot in Bulls circles. I don't know how much you've like interacted with 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 the the the, the Bulls Nation lately on uh talk draft conversations, things like that. EJ Liddell's name has really come up since about midway through the season. Yeah. At least in at least in, in the conversations that I've had. Looking at him, looking at his tape, he got, he's a high energy guy, another guy that you can that you can see coming in, filling a role immediately, but still having some potential to grow and 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 uh access his game. He's 6'7, 245 pounds, can play power forward, can also play some some three as well. Um, he, he's a junior, so he stayed three years in college. Over those three years, his points per game average rose. Every year. Now, his minutes did as well, but his efficiency did too. That's the thing. With higher usage, he got more efficient. And that's the thing you want to look at. Any, any, now, let me not say anybody, but when you just see somebody's averages go up because of minutes, that makes some sense. But when they, they become more efficient, that's easier to yeah. project. So as a freshman, 6.7 points per game. As a sophomore, 16.2 points per game. And as a junior, 19.4 points per game. And he shot that in his junior year at his best field goal percentage at almost 50%. He was uh, 37% from three, which is three-point percentage ro- ro- rose every year as well. Also, his attempts ro- uh, took, a, took a, a dive up every time too. So what that means is that as he shot more threes, he got more efficient as that as well. This is a player that looking at those assist totals went up as well in his junior year, 2.5 assists. Like this, I, the more I see on him, the more I like this kid. What about you, Pat? Yeah, he, listen, what do we say yesterday? Taj Gibson. Guys mm. that stayed long in college, um, refined their game better. Here's the one thing that I will say, right? It, it, a pick like EJ Liddell, if the Bulls were to make it, tells you where – the Bulls feel like they are and how quickly they need to be successful. Yes, mm-hmm. this guy would come in and be a rookie, but the guys that stay longer in college usually are able to come in and make a little bit more of a, a, a immediate impact on the floor because their game's a little more refined. They've had more mm-hmm. time to work on their game. They've had more time to understand what their body is. They don't come in and continue growing at a crazy rate, right? Like we've seen when the Bulls do draft young, all of a sudden you look up and you'd be like, hey man, you wasn't seven foot last year. Um, <laughs> but you look at his game, to me, I really like EJ Liddell's game. Um, a little more, the the weight I like better than the size on EJ Liddell. But, and, and because of, you know, like the power forwards and centers that, that he would be going up against, especially in the Eastern Conference, you know, they're going to have that size on them. But the fact that he's already 240 pounds, he could come to the NBA, gain, definitely gain some more muscle. You know, he'll be a lot stronger in that situation. I feel like he could be possibly do I want to go that high? That's not really that high. Maybe even low based on how he scored in college, but maybe that PJ Tucker kind of player, Mm, the the strong, the strong big guy that you're not just going to move around. Right. And the thing that I love about him is when he was more comfortable, which he will get in the NBA, he played better right on the road. Uh, last season he was about 17 points a game still gave you crazy defense 2.7 blocks a game seven rebounds didn't shoot the three ball as well though at 28 percent averaging about usually taking about one one to two a game on the road at home the confidence was high on him and he absolutely showed out 21 points a game still two and a half blocks 
uh, eight and a half rebounds, shot the three ball 42% when he was back at Ohio State. So I love that when this kid's confident in his game, he's able to play at a higher mm -hmm. level. And I, I think that coming to the Chicago Bulls, you'd be able to put that instill that confidence in him. He'd be able to have a big impact on the team early, and that would be big for him, not only making an impact long term, but even coming on the court next season, the Bulls would need him right away. And you look at 6'7", 245 pounds, but with a 6'11 wingspan. Yeah. That's a monster wingspan. So really, like, if you're looking at a comp to just somebody who, who if you're paying attention to the basketball play, be play, to, that's played right now, that would put him in Grant Williams' territory. Six, uh, Grant Williams, six, Grant Williams is six seven. Yeah, six, yeah, seven six. That's six, a good so, one. So, that's and, and looking one. looking at the role that he has for for the Celtics coming off the bench, right? Um, and not saying he's going to immediately come in and, and be able to do that right away. He may, but that is the type of of, of player that again, it's not going to you're not going to look back and say, hey, EJ Liddell projects to be our starter for for the future at any point in time. No, but. Again, a solid bench player that can play multiple positions that you that you can trust to do some shooting, and he's going to give you effort on defense. There may be times where he, he may get a little outworked on defense, especially in this rookie year. But listen, you give me a player that gives 100 percent effort on both sides of the ball and gets results for that. You take that every single time. Now, as we talked about with some with uh, 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 Mark Willis last year, possibly going um <clears throat> to the Spurs. A lot of mock drafts got EJ Liddell falling that far, maybe even being a reach for the Chicago Bulls at yeah. 18. Do you feel like he would be a bit of a reach? Like, of course, he fits a role, right? But are the Bulls at a point where they can start picking people that just fit a role? Or do you just got to take best available? Because I I'm, am seeing, after yesterday, now all of a sudden, Marjan Beecham's on everything. I'm like, alright, wait a minute. Why did this update? <laughs> um, I think it's at the point, honestly, where you can do either or it really it really just depends on what their vision is for this offseason, because if they're looking at it and saying, hey, we got we, we're, we're going to get a veteran to come in and fill that backup big man position. That's what we know. We're getting a vet there. Yeah. We're going to add another vet with our trade exception or with a veteran minimum that can do some scoring and defense for us. Why not? Let's let's bet on some potential of a junior coming out of college that can score and play defense for us as well and, and maybe excel in that role. So I don't know. Yeah, definitely. It's looking like EJ Liddell is going to be a reach. He, he just recently started falling more towards the the second round here lately. Like I said, I've been monitoring the mock drafts for like two or three months at this point. Um, but for a while there, he was hovering between at one point early in the season. He was damn near a lottery pick. And I yeah. don't understand how he fell so far, considering that he didn't play bad. So, like, what is it? Like, what is it? What's going on that made him fall far? <sighs> I think it, I think it's more so the order that kind of came uh -huh. in, right? Like, who's who's the team that needs a big? You know what I'm saying? Like Orlando, maybe with Chet Holgram, Thunder, maybe with Jabari Smith, mm -hmm. Banchero. That's probably your top three, right? Those are probably your top three all bigs. After that, Kings got bigs already. Um, is Detroit gonna go big again? Maybe I don't like they. They might even get something out of Portland. On I don't know. Mm -hmm. Pacers probably aren't. Portland's probably not. New Orleans probably isn't. Maybe the Spurs. Spurs might go big there early, um, but I don't think they take EJ Liddell that high. Yeah, Washington's got Kyle Kuzma and, and Porzingi. Um, Nick's got nothing but bigs, essentially. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a team of bigs, yeah. so take your pick on that. You know, like as you start looking through it, it's like who's the team that that is in desperate need of that big? And even the teams that you are talking about, like we're talking about EJ Liddell as a reach on those. Like I wouldn't pick. I think because of six seven, that might be the reason you're seeing them fall because a lot of the mm -hmm. bigs that are going ahead of them are closer to seven feet tall. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, maybe that's what it is. I will say this though: in the draft combine, EJ Liddell not only ranked for the best standing vertical leap, he was second in max vertical leap with thirty eight. Would so, you reach for him? if he, even if he's even if he's considered a reach in that situation? Would you do it over a it, over a Marjan Beachup or 
I don't think Mark Willis is gonna fall. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> to go to what we said before, and kind of the Willis. methodology that you brought up is that you said that everything's a need on this point at this team. Yeah, if true. everything's a need position is gonna be somebody that we need to rely on, I say, yeah, I I, I would reach for, for EJ Liddell. Over a guard. I, because I would I would see EJ Liddell being able to contribute more of the things that we lack than a Marjan Beach. We don't need any more scoring right now. Maybe a little, like I said, a little bit off the bench considering how well not how his everything balances scoring. out. But yeah, but EJ Liddell brings some scoring as well. So yeah. it's not like it's True. not like you're just getting a defensive player who who is incompetent uh offensively. He brings offense. So yeah. I, I'm with you, dog. I, and maybe you'd even be able to work them in there, man. Um, it'd be, it, you know, I don't even know if we can go this far back. It'd be interesting to see what Todd Gibson was slated to go at the year redrafted him, and if that was technically a reach for the Chicago Bulls. I mean, everything's a reach until it matters, right? Like, until, <laughs> everything's a reach until you see the guy play. <laughs> like, look, Marcus Teague was a reach. I what thought it was, was a reach then, was, was Todd's drafted? Taj would have been nine? Was he after Derek or before Derek? Either nine was, or seven. He was after Derek. He was after Derek. I believe he was after Derek. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. Don't we'll come back to me. We'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit. We'll figure bit. that out. We'll figure yeah, that out yeah, in a little minute, yeah. man. Uh, but no, before we get into the final topic, man, we do want to break down and, and let you guys know about uh breakdown. Let you guys know uh that this episode is also brought to you by Rock Auto, man. Uh, with the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's not possible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? and wait for the person behind the counter to go through all of the parts, choosing only the brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You have a computer and access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Here's the thing about Rock Auto, too. It's a family business. Serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Go explore their easy-to-use website to find solutions to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How'd you hear about us, Box, so they know that we sent you. Amazing selections, reliably low prices, all the parts you'll ever need at rockauto.com. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, we got we got a former Bulls legend in Jimmy Butler in the finals, and they got rocked, rocked last night. And uh, we'll be talking about that. But first, just an update on what we were just talking about. So Todd Gibson was actually averaged to go between 38th to 42nd in most drafts in 2009, and the Bulls drafted him at 26. So technically, Todd Gibson was a reach. Um, so... So hey, sometimes he reaches work out. I knew, I knew it was close there. I knew it was and, close And there. just some of the people that were that were drafted after Todd Gibson. We got Dewan Summers, uh, Jonas uh, Jerecko, Tony Douglas, Austin Jay. Day. Um, <laughs> Ro Roddy Brubar. I did not realize that he came in the same draft as, as Todd Gibson. Uh, Damari Carroll, Patrick Mills. <laughs> Listen, there's, there's some – and this is the key thing. A bunch of dudes Again, that ain't in the NBA no more? But no, I mean, but players that Pat Patty Mills got paid, right? He came back and did some things in the NFL. Damari Carroll, yeah, he's out of the NBA now, but he had a nice little strip. Like he, they turned into solid role players in the NBA, and that's and what you can get. Sometimes you have that draft, right? Yeah. Sometimes you have that draft that's like, hey, we're not going to get a star here, but we're going to get a really, really, really good player for years to come. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make that move, man. That's interesting. Oh yeah. nine, no, I was right. <laughs> yeah, you were right. Oh nine, that's that's crazy. Wayne Ellington uh, was drafted after him. I already said Tony Douglas, who got completely. I don't even remember how long he stayed in. Dante Cunningham, he had a nice little run in there as well. Uh, Jawan Blair, who went to the San Antonio Spurs, who was Juan already Blair, on a half Blair. a kneecap, but had a, had a what do you have like a nice three season stretch there for a second? Had a nice little Blair had a couple nice seasons. Yeah, you know I'm saying yeah, he did some yeah. work in there. It wasn't nothing crazy. Yeah, so Nothing I mean, to write home. Tyreek Evans in that draft, though. Hi, I miss Tyreek. Yeah. Man, Tyreek was Tyreek was one of the players you watched, and he was like, "Man, I know he can do." <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I just I don't see him as a <laughs> staying around the league wrong. Long. <laughs> we were not wrong. Uh, yeah. who else? Drew Holiday in that draft, man. You know what's crazy? 
some of these mugs you look at, right? Like we look at Drew Holiday as like this this veteran that's still an underrated point guard and a dominant mm-hmm. player in the NBA. And then you see like Taj, and like when you think about Taj, you be like, man, remember when he was young? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's wild, man. But hey, hey, shout out to them for doing their thing. Um, but the Boston Celtics just got completely rocked, bro. I don't know where you sit on the Miami Eastern Heat. Conference Finals. Miami yeah, Heat. the Miami Heat got rocked. Yeah. Celtics did the rocking in that case. Uh, one by twenty points. Uh, what what Miami scored? Like what was it? Nine points in the first quarter? Like what the? I don't know what's going on there, man. Uh, but considering you know Jimmy Butler, they scored eleven points in the first quarter. But Jimmy Butler, you know, went down with a knee injury in the game. They were able to still win that game. They probably should have lost that. Miami Heat really should be down. Down considerably right now. They should probably be down 3 1 right now. Dog, I don't know. Like, Miami is such a weird team because, like, I look at them and literally, Miami is the one team that I can't figure out. And I'm done changing my opinion on them. At literally every game where I'm like, I think they figure out their scoring, they have it. 18 points from the whole the starting five in this game today. They have no options left. By the way, anybody, anybody, and I don't care. I don't care if it was one game. I don't care. Anybody that looks at Duncan Robinson and was like, yeah, I want that guy in a Bulls jersey, slap yourself. Um, I I don't know, bro. Like, I, I look at that Miami Heat team with confusion. Like you said, Jimmy end up. He, he's playing hurt. You know he is. You know We know P.J. was playing hurt as well. Mm. Bam, last game was 31-10. and 10. Time Lord comes back from injury. All of a sudden, he's 9-2-6. and six. Like, I, I, I don't have answers. for. And it looked like the, the weird thing about Boston is mm. that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and most of this playoffs have never been on at the same time. Yeah, that's true. It's like, hey, you cooking today. I'm cooking today. They they they're in a uh, they in a uh, a very simpatico relationship, right? It's like it's like you with your girl when you when you decide who's cooking dinner that night because y'all both work late. <laughs> now, I'm not cooking all seven <clears throat> days in this month. You know what I'm mean? <laughs> Like I, I don't. <clears throat> this is the weirdest series ever. Just to wait for them to be slaughtered by the Warriors. <laughs> like that's how I feel about this. Like I don't feel like either of these teams is gonna hold a candlestick to the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. Here's the, let's let's make it a little bit more interesting for the Chicago Bulls. Victor Oladipo, he did shine in this game. Would you be would you be interested in Victor Oladipo coming to the Chicago? Not for the full mid level on a reasonable contract. If he's not trying to get super paid, how would you feel about Victor Oladipo coming off the Bulls bench? I wouldn't be mad at Vic's coming off of the bench. Vic Vic's a a, a nice player. Um, mm-hmm. I think the problem with Vic is just Vic's been plagued by injuries. Uh, his, yeah. most of I think his perf- I think plagued is a little too light of a word, even though it's a, it's a plague. Like I it's, mean, no, like what's worse than plagued? <laughs> Marred, uh, ravaged, ravaged, <laughs> decimated. There you go. I can't say decimated though. He's got some nice seasons in him as well. But he like, does. But I decimated, mean, decimated, decimated would mean like every year of his career he's been. This but I mean, true. dog, like at least the last six years, probably. <clears throat> nah, probably. I'm probably so going way too In the far last, on that. since 2019, Victor Oladipo has played less or right around 55 regular season games. Where you see him getting 55 at? I see him on the Pacers getting 19. I'm talking about total, bro. Oh, 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 oh. All, oh, 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 all right. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, dog. Like, that's, I, here's the thing, right? We know Ole can play. It's about will Ole be on the team to play. The other thing that you do have to ask yourself as well is which Ole are you going to get? Ole played uh, 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 2016. Ole played under Billy Donovan. Mm, Yeah, you're right. And probably the season that really made people open their eyes to him to be like, oh, no. Vic got Vic got some serious potential. And then he went to the Pacers and completely uh 23, 18 uh averages of 23 points per game in his first season with the Pacers. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, that he's gonna be worth this contract. Yeah. And then injuries started creeping up on him. So so I, I could see I wouldn't mind Vic on the Bulls coming off the <laughs> bench at all. Mm-hmm. I think that the question mark is do you feel like going through another 
possible injury riddled season and and his past would tell you that that's the player that he's currently become but again right like if you get into a playoff run like yeah there he had an injury riddled season this year but say they get into a playoff run he's right now giving them in 21 minutes 12 points 47 shooting 47 percent from the field 41 percent from three and 3.5 assists and playing pretty good defense at least in that last mm -hmm. game not this game but in in the in the in the uh, uh, game three, is it worth the risk of? <laughs> hey, he might get hurt during the season, but by the by the playoffs, he might be back and give you good production. This is very true. This is very true. Um, I guess it, it remains to be seen. I I wouldn't mind depending on what else they do on the bench. Like I would not mind Victor. I would say this. When he's healthy, I trust him to do more than Kobe White and be more consistent than Kobe White <laughs> on both sides of the ball. So, hey, career, what, what's his career? Um, 34% three point shooter. He's been up and down from the three point line yeah. most of his career, too. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Another, another, another wild one before we go. Jimmy Butler does technically hold a player option that there he could go. exercise this season, this offseason. Jimmy coming back. No, I'm not even saying coming back. <laughs> is there any chance? Now, it seems like he loves the culture. We know he get, did get into Eric Spoelstra, but this is it, it, that's all love. That was through the battle. That was that, that was loves that. that was going through the war together. Yeah. But is there any chance? We know Jimmy has been a, 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 a prima donna at times that he opts out of his contract this offseason and and exercises that player option. What would it? What? What's the option? How much 37.6 million. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Jimmy gonna get that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty, thing, right? Jimmy's Jimmy's what 32? Yeah, 32. You giving him he'll be 33 by the start of next season. You gonna start him <laughs> off on a 40 million dollar deal? <clears throat> 40 plus million dollar deal at 32? Well, Taking you mind. to the finals now, maybe. Chris, like, Chris if Paul he did that. Chris Paul did the same thing. When people thought Chris Paul wasn't going to get no money, he did damn near the same thing. They desperate. Yeah, this is true. Phoenix this was desperate this to get a winning team. Like, <clears throat> Miami's like, hey, if we lose Jimmy, we just going to rebuild around Bam and find another guy just like Jimmy. To Pat is just like, like what we said with AK. If, if, if AK is Batman, Pat's Superman. He's just going to be like, oh, don't worry. Hey, him. I hey, no, nah, you know what? I think it's the opposite. I think if AK's Batman, Pat, Pat Riley's the Joker. Like Pat's definitely <laughs> the villain. Pat's definitely the villain, bro. <laughs> That's true. You know what? He's Lex Luthor. Then. He's Lex Luthor. Yeah, That's exactly Luthor. what he is. He's yeah. Lex Luthor, bro. Yeah. Come in, you look at him, and you're just watching him stand in the corner. You're just like, hey, man, like, you know, you're not liked here. And he's like, I know. It is what it is. Whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I did this. I, I did. I made all of this happen. Yeah. Just understand that right now. Hey, yeah. I, you, I run the t retire Michael Jordan's number. Why? He didn't play here. Shut up. Put it. Up. <laughs> what? Huh? That's, hey, that's exactly. That's exactly how it happened too, bro. I. That's a good comparison. Lex Luthor's He's Pat Lex Riley. Luthor, bro. That's right. pretty He's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. and that's exactly how it is too, right? Like, who's Superman then? Some who's Superman? Is it is that uh he's been doing it so long? I don't think he dog, he might be. There's nobody that's been doing it as long as he Jerry West. He ain't won nothing. Well that's the thing. Was he well, well he won with the Lakers, right? He was, well, he was hey, he 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 is the poster child, and Superman is the poster child, even though he's the logo. Yeah, there you go. It might be Jerry West's Superman. Jerry West is Superman. But he ain't winning like Superman. Good no. Lord. All right, man. Let's get up out of here. Hey, man. man Superman, <laughs> Superman, Superman got his butt kicked a few times in the comments. But yeah, let's go ahead and get up out of here. <laughs> hey, man. Follow me on everything at Pat the Designer, man. It's at P A T T H E D E S I G N E R. Also, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. And you can follow me at C E O Hayes, the C E O H A I Z E. Thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen. Now, for your second listen, go and check on Locked NBA, where the Locked On analysts and experts. Experts give you an in-depth analysis on everything playoff draft. Like any, if it's NBA related, they got you covered on Locked On NBA. You, you can even catch our very own Pat the Designer over there once a week. Uh, but this has been it for us. Thank you for tuning in. We love you guys. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. <laughs>